here to help your children spread their wings and fly through life. Today we're talking about four and five year olds and their development and when to seek professional help. Now these little ones are curious about everything, everyone and everything. They have a great love of life. Their gross motor skills are developing. They should be able to slide down slides. They should be able to skip, run backwards, uh, walk on a very thin, narrow line, a straight line. They should be able to jump forward 10 times, hop, skip and jump, kick a ball, a climb up um, playgrounds. They should be very active. Jump on trampolines. These are the sorts of things that children of four to five years of age should be able to do. Their fine motor skills are things like drawing. They should be able to draw circles, lines, squares, um, people with a lot more detail. They should be able to paint and understand all the different colours and that you can mix colours to make new colours. Now these are important skills that children of this age need to be able to understand which means they need to be exposed to those sorts of skills. They need to be able to use a knife, a fork and a, and a spoon and be able to cut with scissors. Obviously with scissors and knives they need proper adult supervision no matter how good they are with it. They have a huge range of sounds that they are able to say and but there are some sounds that they really can't get their head around and we've got a whole section on that that you can have a look at. So when do we need to seek professional advice? If your child by the time they turn five keeps losing balance easy, they're awkward when they're running, their hands are all over the place. They aren't prepared to take risks on the playground. They can't stand on one foot for two to three seconds. They can't skip. Um, they can't hop more than five times. If they can't catch or throw or kick a ball. Now, then I'm not expecting and people aren't expecting kids to be perfect at these activities but they need to be quite solid in their ability to be able to do these. They need to be able to jump 10 times forward. And if they can't do one of these things, then sometimes that just means that they, that they need more time to develop that skill. But if there's three or four of these things that they're not doing, that's when you really need to have a look at um, some medical advice as to whether there's an issue or there isn't an issue. By the time they turn five, they should be able to understand more complex sentences. So if they're confused by short sentences consistently, then you know that there's something that just needs to be addressed. Maybe they can't recognize rhyming words. They have no interest in stories and books. These are issues that should start alarm bells ringing in your head. If they can't blend three to four sounds, like k at t or h at and If you've done that a few times with them and they can't understand what you're doing, then that plus a couple of other things might mean that you need to talk to your GP. Social issues. If they have no interest in feeding themselves and they can't do a knife and a fork and a spoon, then we we need to really look at whether that's an issue with training or whether they're really struggling with that fine motor movement. Some other social issues are brushing their teeth, a sense of who they, who they are and they won't actually do role playing because at this age lots of the play is role playing. They don't play with others, they can't share, they have no imagination, they can't tell a story. Um, if they can't actually respond to a question of who it is or what it is or why it happens, then these are times when you need to really start looking at whether you need to go and talk to a professional about your child's development. Write down all these little things that you're finding with your child. You go, oh, they're not doing this, they're not doing this, they're not doing this. So that you have a list when you go to your GP or your professional and you can say these are the things that I'm worried about. Now they will do an assessment and they will work out what are the th major things that need to be sorted out with your child. 
and they will then be able to be able to definitively say yeah I think there's an issue or oh look if we help you and we support you in this way we can do these sessions for five weeks and you'll find there's a big difference so it may just be a little hole that they're missing that they haven't understood or maybe it's something as simple as you know they've got a sight issue or they've got a hearing issue or something like that that can be easily addressed and easily fixed intellectual skills you need to look for if they can't follow three-step instructions if they have limited vocabulary they're not aware of time and money and they have a limited range of interests and activity in play those intellectual issues need to be brought up with your GP the other professionals who will be involved with your child is an occupational therapist, a speech therapist, a physiotherapist and a psychologist. Now these are people that could end up coming in and they might do simple things like just play with your child or they might give you activities to do at home and if you do those activities every day with your child that will actually help to build up those skills that are needed in those areas. Now remember, their development is like, is like a pyramid. So they have this huge amount of development that they learn, these things that they learn, skills that they learn when they're one, two, three, four, five. Their early childhood is filled with the majority, the base of their learning. And that's like the bottom of a pyramid. And then as we get older, we stack more information on top of that pyramid. And as we stack more information, the information becomes more complex, but it's all based on understanding that bottom lot of knowledge. So our early childhood, that's why it's so important. It gives us a great foundation to our knowledge and our understanding in the future. So the earlier that you can intervene with this and the earlier you can give your children the opportunity to fill in any holes that are happening in that foundation, means that their later learning is a lot easier. Now, I know you might just get worried that they're not doing this or they're not doing that. Remember, these are the milestones for an average four-year-old. And, and, and it's not by the time they're turning four, but by the time they're turning five. So these things, these are the skills they need to be able to have accomplished by the time they've turned five. So I hope that really helps you. And it allays any fears that you have with your child. And if it brings up some issues and you think, oh, they're not doing this or they're not doing that, first of all, think, have you given them the opportunity to learn it? If they've never had a ball to bounce and they can't catch, throw or kick a ball, that's okay because they've never learned how to do it. Give them the opportunity to learn. If after a month they're still don't get, get it and you've been doing it every day with them, that's when you might need to get advice. Enjoy your kids, they're only little once and once they hit school, life goes so, so, so quickly. So enjoy all the aspects of it. Thank you for watching Modern Successful Parenting. All advice and information given during this course is designed for general use only. If you have any concerns for your child, please seek professional advice as soon as possible. For terms and conditions, see website www.modernsuccessfulparenting.com.au. Thank you.